Hello. It's my pleasure to present my talk, Exposure to Control Challenges Increases Stress Resilience in Dog Puppies. This is uh, the work by my master's student, Lisa stolz lechner and myself. Let me start with a brief definition of stress resilience. This refers to the ability to bounce back or recover from stress, the ability to maintain a stable equilibrium in the face of stress, or the ability to adapt well to adversity. Like all behavioral traits, stress resilience is both influenced by genetics and the environment. We know a lot about stress resilience from laboratory studies, mostly in rodents, which have identified that the early environment is particularly important. For example, a high level of maternal care is usually associated with better stress resilience in the offspring. But also human handling in the first days of life can increase an individual animal's stress resilience. Another important factor is environmental enrichment and the concept of stress inoculation. Environmental enrichment refers to opportunities to interact with complex non-social and social stimuli and to explore the environment. Um, often this is achieved through the introduction of novel stimuli. Studies have shown major effects on the central nervous system and behavior from environmental enrichment, including enhanced cognitive, uh, sensory motor and physical activity. Animals that grew up or were kept in enriched environments had larger brains. They had enhanced neurogenesis and enhanced neural connectivity, as well as higher emotional stability and stress resilience. Um, finally, I want to introduce the concept of stress inoculation. There's general agreement that prolonged or very strong stressors are detrimental. However, mild stressors, when they are presented in a controlled and predictable manner, can be beneficial. So stress inoculation is defined as intermittent exposure to mildly stressful situations that present opportunities to learn, practice and improve coping with stress. It has even been suggested that the benefit of environmental enrichment might lie in presenting low level challenges, so low level stresses, which increase the individual's ability to deal with this kind of experience. Let's now turn to my study species, domestic dogs. Dogs are our oldest companion animal and man's best friend. They go with us almost everywhere, sometimes to places that are noisy and crowded, sometimes to places that are really dangerous. At other times, they're exposed to stimuli which do not present real dangers, but may be perceived as dangerous by many animals. Overall, we can conclude that society's requirements on dogs are really quite high. One of the most important developmental periods in dogs is a socialization period, a sensitive period which takes place between 3 and 12 or 14 weeks of age. During this time, it's very easy for the puppies to habituate to a variety of stimuli, and often a quite brief exposure is sufficient. We know from retrospective studies that or puppies that did not have enough experiences during this time are more likely to react fearfully or aggressively later in life. Surprisingly, there are not really that many studies out there on how breeders could optimize their puppies' behavioral development. A couple of studies have focused on the effect of exposure to diverse stimuli during development on later behavior of dogs. Furthermore, there's anecdotal evidence that experiencing and overcoming small challenges has positive effects on dogs' behavioral development beyond that achieved by mere stimulus exposure. Indeed, this notion was supported by a recent study by brain colleagues on a population of prospective guide dogs. In this study, they measured whether the mothers from a certain age of the puppies were standing when nursing or were lying down when nursing more often. 
they found that mothers whose nursing style required greater effort by the puppies produced more successful offspring. The vertical nursing means that the pups have to work harder for their milk, or in other words, overcome little challenges. And this was one explanation put forward by the authors why these puppies were more successful later on. So the aim of the current study was to test whether we as humans can present little challenges to dog puppies and thus result in increased stress resilience in these dogs. We included 83 dog puppies of 12 litters of various breeds in the studies, and all of these were well socialized already by the breeders. Each litter was divided into an experimental group and a control group. The experimental group received four visits per week between the ages of three to five weeks, and they received a variety of challenge and training exercises, which I will explain in a minute. The control group spent the same amount of time with the trainer, received the same amount of food, but did not receive any specific challenges. Instead, um, Lisa was playing with them or was petting them. At the age of six weeks, um, we performed a behavior test with all the puppies. And when the puppies were six months old, owners filled in a personality questionnaire about their dogs. We have not yet analyzed the questionnaire data, so today will be about the behavior test. Training and testing was performed at previous homes, and exercises started one week after eye opening. So between three and five weeks, depending on the date of eye opening, puppies were trained four times a week, in total 12 times. Each day they received a presentation of a novel object, one problem solving exercise and around three start response and recovery exercises. The total time per litter was 10 to 40 minutes per day. And this depended on the number of puppies in the litter that were between four and 13 and also on the age of the puppies. The control group spent the same time with Lisa, but instead they were cuddling and playing rather than having to solve any challenges. Here are some examples. So we had a variety of novel objects. Most of them were moving in some way or making noise. We had noises and other surprises. These were presented to all puppies of the treatment group together. These could be, for example, dropping a heavy book uh, or banging a pot or sometimes also noise recordings, but a lot of real life stimuli where Lisa had to get quite creative. Um, at this age, we did expect that puppies might startle slightly, but this should lead to immediate recovery. One of the 41 puppies showed an exaggerated startle response. Therefore, this puppy was trained separately from the rest of the litter with a lower intensity exposure, because what we do not want is to traumatize the puppies. It should be a challenge that's easy to overcome. When the puppy showed no short startle response at all, the sound was presented a bit louder or the distance was carefully decreased. In the first puppy, you will see that he does startle, but the next time the sound is presented, he no longer reacts. Of course, with adult dogs, you wouldn't want any startle response at all when getting them used to noises. 
But at this age, it is normal for puppies to show a brief startle and then habituate very easily to this kind of stimuli. Um, and third category was the problem solving tasks. And here, as an example, you have a detour test at the age of five weeks, which is quite tricky because it requires self-control as well as the cognitive ability to find the detour. When the puppies were six weeks of age, they were tested in a puppy test, which included the exploration of a novel room, an interaction with a friendly stranger, a novel object which was moving, a problem-solving task, and a loud noise which was balloon busted two meters away from the puppy. And the puppy test videos were coded by a blinded coder who was not involved in the study. Interrate reliability was good, and we then calculated a nonlinear PCA over 19 variables, which yielded four factors explaining 55.8% of the variance. The first principal component was labeled social startle, and it, this included a short latency to approach the friendly stranger, a high amount of time seeking body contact, However, also a strong reaction to the loud noise. The second component, um, reaction to novelty, this included a short latency to approach the novel object, a lot of time touching the novel object, little proximity to people during the novel object test, and fast recovery after the loud noise, which was measured by how quickly the puppy was willing to play again. The third um, component was labeled exploration which consisted of high exploratory behavior during the exploration test, a high carriage of the tail, and a low duration of whimpering during exploration, as well as a short success latency during problem solving. Finally, whimpering was the last component, and here we had loadings for whimpering in all of the subtests where this was measured. We then performed linear mixed models to test for the effects of treatment, age testing, it was between six and seven weeks, sex and litter size on the four principal components with litter as a random effect. Two components did not differ significantly between treatment groups, expiration and whimpering. There were, however, highly significant group differences for the other two components. Here you see the result for social startle, which was significantly higher in the control group Vice versa, um, response to novelty, the training group scored significantly higher than the control group. So what does this mean? The training group showed more exploration of the novel object and less comfort seeking with humans during the novel object test. Furthermore, they showed a less pronounced reaction to the loud noise and a faster start in recovery, as measured by latency to play after the loud noise. Conversely, the control group showed a much higher interest in the stranger, and that was an unexpected result. And we do not believe that we might have made the treatment group less sociable. However, it is possible that um, this was a positive effect of the higher amount of handling which the control puppies experienced. Or maybe it was simply related to the expectation these puppies developed in relation to visitors. The treatment group always had lots of action when Lisa visited. The control group was spending more time just interacting with the person. We do not know. In any case, all the puppies received basic handling and exposure to novel objects from the breeders already. Still, our presentation of challenges and surprises, which went beyond this usual socialization, had a positive effect on puppy stress resilience. The follow-up regarding the long-term effects is currently in progress. To conclude, stress resilience in dog puppies can be improved through targeted exercises. But individual differences in stress tolerance need to be considered. 
So I want to close with this quote by Parker and Maestro Gieri. When inducing stress early in life, it is very important to do this carefully. It always should be manageable for the individual rather than severe stress induction, which can lead to negative effects later in life. Yeah, with this, I want to say thank you very much for your interest, and I'm happy to answer any remaining questions.